Hi, my name is Katie Ravenwood, and I'm here to help you make the very best virtual ensemble video you can make. Maybe your band director has decided you need to record a part of a piece you're working on for an assignment for school. Maybe your orchestra director wants you to record a part of a big symphony that you guys are rehearsing together for a big virtual video. Or maybe your crazy clarinet choir director has decided you need to record all eight parts of an awesome clarinet choir piece for inclusion on a virtual concert that you guys wanna to do together. Regardless, there's lots of things you've gotta think about when you're setting up to make a virtual video where you're gonna sit, what you're gonna wear, how you sound, all of these things are important to making the very best video you can make. Now first things first, the most important thing you can do to ensure you make a really good video is to practice your part. That means before you ever sit down in front of a video camera, work out all your notes, work on your counting, play along with the recording your director gave you so that you sound just like the ensemble does and you fit in just right. Make sure that you have a good read, make sure that when you're sitting down to play you have a comfortable chair and that everybody can see you. We'll talk a little bit about that part next. But most importantly, make sure that you're comfortable with your part. The more comfortable you are playing it, the better you're going to look and sound on the video. One of the first things you want to think about when you're setting up to record a video is where you're going to record and what's going to be in the background. Usually when I record, I'm here in my office down here, there's a lot of stuff going on in the background and it's a little bit busy. Um, sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. I mean, there's a lot of books in the background, my desk, a repair bench, some other things that are going on. Sometimes I want a place that's a little bit more calm and controlled. Hey, like this, this is so much better, right? There's less going on in the background and it's a little bit more calm. So one of the things you want to think about is that when you're making a video, you want to be sure that they're looking at you, not at everything around you. Even better, if you can try to position yourself up against a wall that's all one color, it doesn't have to be white, it could be dark curtains like this, that makes it even more apparent that you're the focus of the video and that can be really helpful. If you don't have a single solid color wall like this in your house, don't worry about it. Things can be in the background and it doesn't really matter. We're still gonna be focusing on you, just do the best you can. Here's one of my very favorite subjects when it comes to making videos, lighting. One of the things you really have to think about when you're setting up a video is making sure that you have the light source in the proper place. For instance, if you look behind me right here, there's a lamp right behind my head, which isn't necessarily the worst thing. You can still see me, but you have to squint a little bit to see what I look like or even what I'm doing. If you turn around so that the light source is now in front of you, all of a sudden, the light is much, much better, right? So you can see me clearly. Things in the background behind me are a little bit in the dark, and that's fine, because then they're not the focus of what's going on. So when you set up your lighting source, make sure that you think about where the light source is going to be coming from and where it's going to be shining on you, particularly if you're going to be filming anywhere near a window. One of the tricky things about filming near a window is that you want to do it at a time where you're sure the light coming through the window is not going to mess with your plans. For instance, if I'm sitting in front of this window right now, it's dark outside, it's nighttime, it's fine, but check this out. Now look at the difference. If you put me in front of this window, it's really hard for you to see my face and the window is really bright in the background. So we want to avoid that. If you have a window, try to see if you can turn around so it shines on you instead of behind you. One of the things you need to consider when you're making a video is what kind of noise is going on in the background. For instance, my favorite place to record in my whole house is my basement, which is great except that half the time when I'm playing, the heater, which you can see up there, is going and it's really, really loud. So when you're getting ready to perform, try to make a decision about when you wanna play that coincides with a time when 
there's not a lot of background noise. There's not a lot of other things going on. Sometimes you can't help it. If that happens to you, don't worry about it too much. This is the beauty of making videos, right? You can do as many takes as you want until you get it right. Now, the other thing you need to keep in mind when you're making a video, make sure you pay attention to what's going on in the background in your video as well. Sometimes really crazy things go on in the background of some video submissions I've seen and nobody seems to notice. Make sure you check it out and make sure no one's running around in a towel or... Now, here's another thing you need to be thinking about when you're setting up to record. You found your place, you found your good lighting, you found where you want to sit. Now you've got to be thinking about where you're going to put your camera so that it records properly. One of the weird things about recording with a cell phone is you've got to find a way to prop it up or hold it so that it's stable while you're recording. Now, here's the thing to not do. Don't let someone who's helping you hold the camera. Do you remember when I was filming those other videos a second ago, how when I held it, it was going back and forth like this. That's not helpful, right? So when you're setting up your video, you want to put it on a flat, stable surface that's not going to move while you play. Also, if you can help it, you probably want to put it a little bit above where you're sitting and playing because you're going to get a better shot of what you're doing. For instance, <laughs> If you put it lower, this happens. This is on my music stand. And that doesn't work too well because you can see right up my nose, which is not great. I don't recommend it. Whew, that's much better. All right, so now that you've got that figured out, make sure that you have your camera on a stable, flat surface. Don't let somebody else hold it to record your video or else it'll be shaky. All right, now that you've got all those other things figured out, we need to talk about how you're gonna set up your recording device so that you're gonna sound the very best you can possibly sound. When you're recording a video, you're probably gonna be using your phone, which has a really great camera and usually a really great microphone. Honestly, you don't need anything more than that. What I'm using to record this video, in fact, is my phone with the front-facing camera, um, so that when you see it, the video quality is really good and so is the audio. When I set it up, one of the things that I want to consider is how many frames per second are in the video. Now, if you take your phone and you look up in the corner, there's probably a little meter up there that tells you a couple of things. One of them is what the quality of the video is. For instance, on an iPhone, it'll tell you high quality, 4K. It'll also tell you how many frames per second. And this is really, really important. Let me show you what I mean. If you open the camera app on your phone, often there are settings you could adjust right there on your screen. I have an iPhone, so I'm going to use that to show you how to do it. On the top right, often there are a couple of options on an iPhone that lets you change the quality or frame rate of your video. For instance, you can change from HD to 4K on my phone or from 30 to 60 frames per second. For our purposes recording a video, either of these settings are good because it gives us enough definition and clarity to see and hear what we need to see and hear. For the purposes of this video, I used an iPhone simply because that's what I have in my house. The camera settings for most manufacturers of phone, tablets, and even laptops are really similar. And if you're not sure how to change them, use the search term camera settings with your device's manufacturer and they should have tutorials to help you figure out how to change things so that you can get the best video and audio quality. Often if you can't adjust the settings directly in your camera app, you can do so on the settings area of your phone. On the iPhone, go to your settings menu and then scroll down until you see camera. Click on camera and then you'll see 
changes you're able to make in formats, and your video recording size and frame rate. If you click on Record Video, you'll see there are different choices you can make there. Some older phones have different choices than this, but generally most of the ones available here on this menu are okay for us. The best one to use for most videos is 1080p HD at 30 frames per second. If you go back to the previous screen and click Formats, you have a choice between High Efficiency and Most Compatible. Generally speaking, High Efficiency is the best choice because most video programs can recognize the file type and the compression rate. Most Compatible will give you more options so that you can import it to more kinds of software, but either one should work just fine. So let's talk about what frames per second actually means. The frame rate of a film refers to how many still images occur in the space of a second. Most videos that we see aren't really an actual moving image. They're a number of still images packed all into a short amount of time. The human eye can see about 24 frames per second. So when we see something that has more images in a second than that, we perceive it as moving video. When our frames per second rate is lower, and I've seen videos come in at 15 or even 10 frames per second, all of a sudden our eyes can now see each individual image as a separate still shot. That means when we look at videos, it makes them look jerky or th like they have pauses or like they're just a set of still images all in a row. When you put them into an image editor, the other thing that happens is that often those images become blurry so that the video you see isn't clear and doesn't show you a good picture of what's going on. That's also why size is important. If a file is really small, say for instance, this square, when we enlarge it, the image in there doesn't contain enough information to give us a clear picture of everything that's happening in the image. When it's enlarged, it also becomes blurry and really hard to watch. So if you're making a video for a virtual ensemble, it's usually better to try to record it in as high definition a format as possible. For instance, like I said before, HD 1080p. You can make them smaller, and that does have some advantages. The larger the resolution, or frame size and frames per second rate, the larger the file will be when you have to upload it. So you really wanna solve for having really good quality and a file size that's not too big. For most of the projects that we ask you to do, generally, we can handle file sizes at those rates, HD 1080p. So try to get as close to that as you can. The videos we do are not all that long. And so that means that once it's uploaded, it might take a little bit of time, but it'll look really, really great. When you're recording, you wanna make sure you're recording your video directly into your camera app on your phone. Don't record it into Flipgrid or into any other software that you use because if that software crashes, you may lose your performance. It's really important to make sure you get your best take and you can keep it. You can usually upload it to one of those services after you're done, but make sure that you record it into your camera app first. That way it's saved on your phone in case anything happens. All right, the next thing that we need to talk about is framing. Framing is when you set up a video shot to make sure that you are the center of attention. Now, when you set up your video, you wanna make sure that everyone who's watching can see you and most of your instrument while you're playing. It's not always important for them to see the entire thing, just where most of the action happens. For instance, when I play the clarinet, my clarinet's long, it goes from top to bottom this way. If I sit this way, that's not too bad. <laughs> If your band director or someone has told you to record in landscape mode, that's fine. Frame yourself this way so that we can see you playing. One thing not to do though, don't film yourself playing too close. Look at this. You can only see the very top of my instrument. It's not super interesting unless you want to watch what my face does while I'm playing and just that. Sometimes that's good. Sometimes though, not the best idea. 
For most instruments, filming in landscape mode makes the most sense. For instance, flute. other instruments, sometimes it makes more sense to record in portrait mode. That way we get to see all of the action. Now some of you are probably wondering how to change your phone from portrait to landscape mode. It couldn't be easier if you have a phone usually. All you have to do is take your phone and turn it to the side. Now if like this is happening right now, your video is showing in your video editor or in your camera roll as sideways, that's still okay. Once you send the video to the video editors, we can usually turn it right side up. One way to fix that is that on some phones, there's something called an orientation lock. On the iPhone, it's really easy to turn the orientation lock on and off. If you swipe down from the top right corner, you'll see a lock with a circular arrow around it. If you tap it, it will turn the orientation lock on or off, allowing you to turn your phone and your camera sideways. Usually whatever orientation you start your video in is the way it will continue for the rest of the recording. If this happens and your orientation is stuck one way or the other, don't worry about it too much. Make sure all of the elements that we talked about otherwise are in place. Good lighting, good framing, good location. And generally, when you send it to the video editor for your ensemble, we can try to fix the orientation. Okay, now you're ready to record your video. You've done everything you've needed to do to set it up correctly. And now you need to make sure that you're ready and you look the best you can for making your recording. Now, whatever that means to you or whatever your director has asked you to wear, wear that. Don't be uncomfortable. Make sure that you follow the rules that someone has asked for in their request for the submissions. If they told you to wear black, wear black. If they tell you to make sure to wear your formal tux, wear your tux. If they tell you to make sure that you wear the t-shirt for your ensemble, wear the t-shirt for your ensemble. It makes it more fun for everyone and it's much easier to edit everything together. If you have a problem with what you need to wear, talk to your director. I'm sure they'll come up with some solution that'll work for everybody. Okay, here are the things you need to remember when you're setting up your video. Make sure you practice your part so that you're comfortable playing it all the way through in one good take. Choose your location carefully. Think about how your location, the background, and the lighting make you look in the video and try to find the very best options for you. Adjust your device settings so that they make the most sense for the video you're trying to make. Make sure that your frame rate, your size, and your orientation are set correctly and that you're set in the frame so that we can see you well. Make sure you look great. Follow your director's instructions about what to wear and make sure you're ready to be on camera. Great, I think you've got all the details you need to make the best video possible for your project. You can always check back to this video to make sure that you get the settings right or that you haven't forgotten anything. Have a great time and I look forward to seeing your performances.